Latching logic and with conveyor example. This is where we left it and uh, what you should have done before you got to the next lab, which is on latch and unlatch or set reset logic, is you should have saved this. I'm going to save it with something different. Okay, so I'm going to upload this. It gave you the opportunity to start a new project and name it latch one or delete everything in your project and save it as latch one. I'm going to save as, okay I have all the logic added in the manual. I had to go through and do a procedure to operate this code. I see that in playing with it I already have a bit set so I'm going to hit a stop button and clear it. So this is the way I want you to start. Input zero on and all other switches off. Download, go online in the run mode. Press and hold down both start buttons. So both start and buttons would be input one and input two. As you hold them down, what addresses are on in memory? Well, the primary ones that I'm interested in are output one and output two. However, if you put down input zero, input one, input two, and output one and two, that's fine. Because five memory locations represented here and they're on, and that would be I colon 0, .0, zero slash zero slash one and slash two. They're all on in memory. But the primary ones that we wanted to observe are output one and output two. Are any instructions true? Every single instruction, well, remember on the right side, those are on off. They're never true or false. But over here on the left side, out of the five instructions, th four of them are true basically you could say all of them are true but the true if on that's addressing input 3. In other words stop push button 2. Release both start push buttons. What addresses are on in memory? Well you could add input 0 the stop push button if you like but primarily we're interested in output 1 and output 2. So when we push the start push buttons both outputs went on, correct? Output 1 and output 2. Press and hold both stop push buttons, which would be 0 and 3. What addresses are on in memory? Well, the only address that's on is the memory bit pointed to by input 3, which is stop push button 2. We're really not interested in that particular bit. We're interested in output 1 and output 2. So, so far, the start push buttons have caused the same behavior of outputs 1 and 2. They were both on, right? When you hit the start push buttons. Now that we hit the stop push buttons, they're both off. So if we release both stop push buttons, what addresses are on in memory? Well, only input 0. But the ones that we're interested in, output 1 and 2, they're both off. So to back up, well, and it says, are any instructions true? Yes, the true if on, input 0. Now just looking at output 1 and 2, let's do the two start push buttons which are 1 and 2. Release and outputs 1 and 2 are on. Now we hit both stop push buttons which is 0 and 3, release, and output 1 and 2 are off. What we're demonstrating here is that rungs 1 and 2 are equivalent to rung 0 in operation with one you might say two differences but when the programs in the run mode and everything's running they operate identically so then what I had you do is press both start push buttons again so we have outputs one and two on then I had you go to the remote program mode up here And then I ask you, are those bits still on? Yes, they are. I'll put one and two are on. Then I had you go back to the run mode and pay attention to these two right here, output one and two. Notice that output one drops out. Are the bits that were on before the mode change still on? No, they're not. Now they were on when you went to the program mode, but when you went back to the run mode, it dropped the bit that's controlled by an OTE the seal in logic with the OTE it dropped that bit. Your takeaway from this is that if you want a bit to stay on through a mode change 
you need to use a latch unlatch set reset and remember that a an OTE the top instruction that basically behaves like a regular relay I push the start push button and that makes continuity to turn on output one when I let go a contact from output one keeps output one on it seals in and that's exactly what you do with a relay the bottom ones and, and keep in mind if I hit the stop push button in rung zero now the rung is false and the false execution of an OTE the top output instruction is to turn the bit off these bottom two instructions the latch and unlatch have a true execution but no false execution and that's why output 2 is on because when we hit the start push button it said hey output 2 you're on and then when you released it there was silence the last thing output 2 heard bit that bit addressed by 0 colon 0, .0 2 the last thing it heard was hey you're on when I push the stop push button 3 that rung is now true and it says hey output 2 you're off I'm going to let go of the button silence so you see the OTE the top output instruction addressing uh, bit 1 in the output file it has a true and a false execution whereas the latch and unlatch do not have a false execution only a true now you say well it looks like it works out about the same well not exactly because if I turn on the bottom one everything can go away and that's going to stay on okay all the logic goes away that's going to stay on okay because the last thing they heard was you're on the latch and unlatch are drawn as coils they look like the OTE but they have an L and a U inside but they are the same device okay they compare to a latching relay back in the day they had latching relays that had two coils one coil the latching coil when you energize it it pulled the contacts against the armature that moves the contacts against the pole piece in the coil and it opened a contact and closed the contact you know normally closed normally open and there was a spring-loaded sear or dog with a ramp on it and when the contact was pulled closed and you released de-energize the coil the dog grabbed the armature and held it down and held the normally open closed and the normally closed open and it stayed that way with no power applied to the coil like you see right now neither one of those rungs are true one and two there's no continuity but it shows that that bit is on and then when you energize the second coil of a latching relay it was assembled in a means that pulled the dog or the sear back and released the contacts that were latched in the energized position so it unlatched so one coil pulls the contacts down and they're latched another coil pulls the latching mechanism back and releases them so always keep that in mind that these three instructions here actually behave as two devices the top one is a standard coil energize it it moves the contacts de-energize it they go back so it has a true and a false execution so to speak whereas the bottom two rungs represent one device you see one memory location there output two for both instructions one turns the bit on and the other turns it off and so any instructions like true if on true if off xic xio that are attached to that memory location that read that memory location act exactly like the contacts that were part of a latching relay then also we had you kind of write a little summary of xic xio ote otl and out it says out in the manual but it should be otu uh, so much for microsoft word auto spelling correction every time i type in otu i get an out I just have to keep an eye on that and I apologize if you find some in the manual now if you're watching these without the manual you should have the manual because they're not going to be absolutely clear without the manual if you wanted to describe an XIC that's one that looks like a normally open relay context so you examine that bit in memory if that bit in memory acts like 
a coil that's been energized and closed its contacts, then it's true. I, so the bottom line was, with the XIC and the XIO, I call those true on, true off, because the instruction is true, has true continuity, if the memory's on, the memory bit is on, or it has true continuity if the memory bit is off. True if on, true if off, the faster you adapt that way of thinking, you don't have to call them that, you can call them XIC and XIO, but think of an XIC as true if on, think of an XIO as true if off. As is our want throughout all of our manuals, we try to give you practical applications. As you learn instructions, we either create a practical application or we add to a previous practical application. And our last practical application was using sealing logic with these three conveyors, a gravity-fed conveyor and two motorized conveyors with four photo eyes. We had a size fault logic that Photo I1 and 2 were blocked at the same time that it declared a fault. So we're going to go back to that logic and have you open that logic back up. So you can save this with some name that you like and then open up that previous project that was the practical example with the conveyors. This is that project and I'm going to go online. I won't always show you all of these little details, but in the beginning we like to um, Hit them as many times as we can. Let me turn the volume down on that disgusting noise. That's tolerable. Change back to the run mode, go online. Okay, we're back online now with our conveyor system. Conveyor's not running. And uh, if you want to exercise it again, you could. Let's look at this rung. This is the rung that we're going to change right here. 1PE and 2PE if both of the optical paths are interrupted simultaneously, then we declare a size fault. As we said, we create a size fault if 1PE and 2PE are blocked at the same time. So you could say, if 1PE and 2PE, then size fault. So we want to demonstrate the difference between sealing logic and latch unlatch. So we took this previous code that you did in your conveyor example, and now we're going to edit it. Real simply, double click to put it in the edit mode. I'm going to remove the stop push button. Remove the seal in. Change this to an OTL. And then I need to add a new rung that looks at the stop push button. and then unlatches the fault. So click both rungs here. Now, I'm, I clicked on one, I, I'm going to control click. So I'm only cl clicking the ones that are in the e-edit zone and I can hit accept, test, and assemble. I think that matches what you've got in your book except for one thing. <laughs> Uh, and this, if you were writing the code, you, you might let this bite you one time, and then as soon as you look at it, like I am saying, wait a minute, I, I'm using the stop button as it was used before. So I have to take and flip the logic, make that an XIO, true if off, because we're set up for a no, normally closed push button. And I wanted to use the exact same push button that I used up here. Now we're all set. If we start the conveyor by pushing the button connected to input one, it's now running. And now if we block photo I one, clears, blocks photo I two, clears, we're okay. But if we block photo I one, then block photo I two, now we've got a fault. And of course you can't restart it because you got a fault. But if you clear the fault, and notice, if I pull it out of one foot away, let's say somebody just pushes it forward, whoops, yeah, pushes it forward and clears one PE, or pushes it backwards and clears two PE. That still doesn't reset it. You have to um, 
clear the thing, you know, clear the carton out of there. Now they could cheat, okay? Let's say they just pushed it all the way forward so it was out of the way and then hit the stop push button, which is input zero. So it's reset and then they push the input one and away the conveyor goes again. Let's wait for the next carton. Here we have a practical example where we did it one way and that is with all seal in logic. And we still have the seal in logic for the motor control, but now we're using latch unlatch for the fault.